Do you know how much God loves you? I can tell you the answer is no, because the Bible says that no eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has stored up for those who love him. Paul prayed that people would know the breadth, the depth, the height, the width of God's love. Why? Because it's so big, overwhelming, uncomparable to anything we could ever think of. Ephesians says that God made this planet for us, not us for the planet. The garden was not created first because it was thought of first. The garden was created first as a preparation for the people God was gonna put in the garden. A baby, the nursery is painted and made first. The blankets are bought, the crib is bought, the nappies are bought, the clothes are bought before the baby arrives. Why? Because the baby's coming. They are not brought and then people say, oh, we better have a baby to put in the crib. We get a crib for the baby. The crib is worth nothing in comparison to the baby. The baby is what everything is done for. The crib has a purpose. The purpose is to hold the baby. The world had a purpose and still does. That purpose is to hold God's babies. What is important to God is you. You are important to God. The circumstances in your life, he will work for your good. If you are called according to his purposes, and you are, and if you love him. Loving him means listening to him and obeying his commandments, because we love who he is, and he is God, the creator, the guider, the restorer, the redeemer, the deliverer. It is all about him and his glory. And that's fabulous to us because we are his glory. He glories in us as a mother or father glories over their child. The best thing in their house is that baby. The bills are paid. The mortgage is paid, the house is bought, the garden is cleaned, the grass is kept, the paths are swept, rubbish and dirt are hoovered up. Why? For the baby. The father goes to work to make money for the baby. Clothes are brought for the baby, food is bought for the baby. Family gather round the baby. Everything is about providing for the baby. When the baby makes a mistake, the parent chooses. Make it better. Teach them not to do it again. Show them how to live life as best is for them to have the best life. Mistakes are covered up. Payments are made. And the baby is cherished. God cherishes you no matter what you do. It is important that you separate your do from your who. Who are you? God's child. What do you do? Completely up to you. Free will. What is God doing? Loving you and searching for you in every way he needs to as the father looks for the prodigal son. As the shepherd looked for the sheep and all they needed was the sheep to call and the son to come. Then the father and the shepherd ran to their cherished possession. The father held his son and kissed him. Put a robe on him, a ring on his finger, shoes on his feet and threw a party. The shepherd held the sheep, put him over his shoulder and carried him home. Your heavenly father has so much compassion for you. Anything, anything at all today that you feel makes you not worthy, give it to him now and in Jesus' name accept the truth. Nothing you do changes your who. You will always be his, but he wants to talk to you about behaviour. It may not affect your who, how you behave, 
but it will affect your what. What will you have in life? What will you have after life? What will others around you have? Will you have living water flowing out of your being, deep peace and thorough contentment? Will you truly be able to know your worth and receive the provision that God has for you, not just physically but spiritually? No, not unless you do what your who is worth doing. You are a child of God and you are worth living as a child of God, a slave to righteousness a slave only to those things that actually are so good for you. Romans 13 verse 8 says, Let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Have you been holding something against somebody when your heavenly Father holds nothing against you? Have you changed who someone is to you because of what they do? Feel free to pause this recording now if you need to. Maybe write down the people who you have allowed to be affected by their do instead of their who. These people you have decided are a certain thing instead of realising no. They do a certain thing, but they're still God's children. Ask the Lord now as you discuss each one of them with him, do you have the right to decide who they are? And how should you respond to them as a child of God like you are? Jesus said, don't forgive only seven times, Peter, but forgive 70 times seven. In other words, don't forgive only as it seems possible to you in your human state. Forgive as if you were divine. This is so hard. Seven was the number of completion and God timed that by ten and then said, now times this by seven? We are not divine, but he is. And yes, he does live in us. The God of the impossible can help me to do the impossible. And it begins inside of me. Revival starts in the heart of man. What's in your heart today? What's in my heart today? Can you forgive yourself? Can you really go over the things that you have told yourself you've done or you are and forgive them? Because the truth is, you are a child of God. You are God, God's child. You are a child of God the impossible. A child of impossibility. You have the spirit of your father in you. As a natural child has a father's eyes, you have the father's heart. You have the mind of Christ. You have the compassion of the Lord. You have the fruits of the Holy Spirit inside of you. Who is the Holy Spirit? God in you. Emmanuel, Jesus Christ came that you too could have God in you. If Jesus could forgive them hurting his mother by killing him, beheading his cousin and ridiculing him, ridiculing his followers, slaying so many martyrs throughout history. If Jesus can forgive the evil we have all done to one another, how much more can the Holy Spirit in you forgive those who have hurt you. The main person may indeed be yourself. Have you broken your own heart? Have you chosen 
things that you wish you hadn't. Are you a fool again? Have you been a fool? That's what you did. It's not who you are. Isaiah chapter 43 says, You are mine. The Bible says God has wrote your name on his hands. You don't know how big his thoughts are, but they're forever towards you. The word grace in the Bible means leaning towards with extravagant favour. God loves you. Don't let your mind condemn you and tell you you're someone different to who you really are. Know the truth today and the truth will set you free. Heavenly Father, come and fill our minds with reality and truth. We belong to you. Spend a few moments sitting in God's presence. Talk over your do's with him. Repent of believing they change who you are. Thank him. Thank him now because you're his. You're his. Talk to your father about all of your do's and ask in the name of Jesus that he will empower you to change what's wrong. Give truth to your mind so you don't keep condemning yourself and let you know deep in your soul that you're his. One John chapter four and verse 16 says God is love. Your father is love. You are not from the father of lies. He will tell you things that are not true. And I bet he's tried. But you are from the father of love. Your father loves you. And he will tell you the truth about who you are. His whole embodiment is love, the spirit of love. 1 John 3 verse 1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. The world does not know God who is love. The world knows selfishness. Your flesh nature knows selfishness. You know very well what you want and what you need and what you prefer and what you desire. For that is the nature that we have received because Eve first desired to be like God. She listened to the whisperer who said she was not enough and took the fruit to make herself enough and God was broken because she was already enough. You are already enough. Your heavenly father loves you. He will never love you more because of anything you do. Obedience does not give you more love, more standing, more provision, more of the spirit, more of anything with him. He gives you everything simply because you are his child, but being his child and knowing your worth, he wants that to inspire you. So you live for your worth, live for who you are. You are better than your regrets and your grief. They mean nothing to him. He will wipe them away if you will just come home today. He wants to pour and lavish who he is all over you. Love. He wants you to be known as his, as part of his family, having his second name. You are a child of love. He wants you to live as that child. So the world that doesn't know him 
may see you like they saw him, not because you put it on, just because you are it. You don't put on your family name, you just are your family name. The blood that pulses through your veins belongs to your family name. Even if you don't know who they are, you share their blood. People who don't know who God is still share his name, but they don't know his character. They haven't spent time with him nor allowed him to influence their being. Will you allow him today to influence your being? Begin on the inside with who you are and just be his. Then the world will see you as they saw him. They won't understand. They may never know why. But you, you will always belong to him. Bring your regrets to him today. Bring your past to him today. Bring the people you cannot forgive to him today. Bring yourself to him today. And in the name of Jesus, receive your forgiveness. Because you are his. The Bible says what God has joined together, let no man separate. And God has joined you to him. You are part of the vine. He is the vine. You are the branch. There is no division, no separation from you and him. But what you allow in your soul and mind. He is looking for you. He is searching for you. He is never going to let you go. Come home and obey him because of love. <laughs>